I press it. Oh, there you go. You just have to sort of double between them. All message are visible, but where? I'm gonna go get my glasses, no one's here. <clears throat> I hope I have the time right. Well, somebody's here. I think it's got... six hours, right? Six hours ahead? We've got two people here now. So... Hey, two people. <laughs> Thanks for coming, two people. Yeah. It's at three o'clock in the afternoon over where you are. Hello, Christopher. Christopher Ramel. Ramela. Hey. I know your uh, thumbnail picture. Five people are here. We gotta get this up higher. <laughs> I'm just gonna put it up. Yeah. There we go. go He's high. so tall and I'm so short. I, I can bend down. <laughs> I can, we can do like that thing like out of like, one, one of the Lord of the Rings films we can adjust. Make so you, I'm, like, I'm like, you know, like Gandalf, you're like Frodo, but we can adjust the perspective. Um, so where are comments? Um, so comments, comments are, are that. that there. Some messages, all messages are visible. Yeah. So then where are they? Yeah, I think just scroll up on them. So I do that, I think, and live chat, oh, I don't know. Live chat, okay. But where's the chat? Oh I know what God. I do. I'll bring up the chat on out on YouTube. Here. Okay. Yeah, it's 9 p.m. here too. All right. Natalia, oh my God, hey. Cool, I'm glad somebody I know is here. There's two people I know. Oh, it pops up on the screen. Wales, 8 p.m. Oh, okay. Wales, UK. <laughs> Angela's here. All my peeps are here, yay. We'll give it a, a moment. Everybody Cheers, show everyone. Up. Cheers. We're drinking Swiss beer in Switzerland. Hop fab means head chop, <laughs> as we've just learned. 16 people here. Greetings, fellow earthlings. Is it Mr. Googles? One of your peeps. Cheers, Whee! Tabitha. <laughs> we'll give it a moment for some other people to arrive. And then I want y'all to know in 30 minutes, we will go live on Adeptus Psychonautica's channel. So we're gonna do this until the half hour and then we'll go live on his channel. And we'll talk about, cheers to Switzerland, right? And uh, so I did 20 people here. I did DMT today, it's been a couple of hours. Yeah. About three hours <laughs> since I did DMT. And we'll talk about that and then we'll talk about it again, I guess. On Sure. On your channel. Might be a couple of repeat people that'll hear his story again, but you'll see my earrings. <laughs> Thanks, LMP. You can pull up the chat. Yeah. So he's going to pull the chat up on his computer so we can read through. And you can read questions to me if you want. Yeah, I already did it, Angela. What I decided to do was just record doing it, and I'm gonna upload it to my um, private patrons on Mushroom Voice, because I sure can't put it on YouTube, or, you know, they'll take my whole channel. And then give it a couple of weeks, and then I'll upload it to my website under I Do and Theogens on camera. I'll upload it to that playlist, and y'all can watch it. Although, after I tell you what happened, nobody will want to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, I can see better without these. Hello. Hey, Kayla. Oh, my God. Caleb's here. Yay. <laughs> well, you're looking so well. Such a change when I saw your live last. Oh, thank you, Tabitha. We have something in Russian, but I don't, I can't read it. <clears throat> yeah, I, I wouldn't even want to guess at how to pronounce that, but hello. Yeah, I don't want to do it wrongly. I'm just hanging here. I got in, um, I took the train this morning and we just hung out and chatted and then um, 
I did DMT and then we left and went shopping around and then went out and ate or whatever. So it's just been like a really chill so far thing. And I've got my tickets for <laughs> RMC. I'm so excited like, to meet you. It's, it's, it's bizarre that you describe it as like a chill day when we've done DMT. We've been, <laughs> in, we've been like a fur ground. We've been in like a walking through a fun house. Well, that, that, that's a chill day. Which I suppose say something about how crazy the rest of your time has been while you've been traveling. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I'd describe it as a chill. It's been a fun day. I've been, I've been really It's enjoying. been fun. It actually really has been fun. Yeah, it hasn't been chill. <laughs> it's been busy. It's been busy we're and pack, fun. We're, we're I guess, but that feels chill to me. Yeah, it's, it's good because it's, you know, spend time with people who enjoy the company. That's... Yeah. And I guess it's chill because there's no, it hasn't been any rushing. And like, usually when I'm on work trips like this, there's just a bunch of rushing but I did a really large psilocybin uh, trip. I had something really rough happen. Um, I'm making this desk shake. I had something really rough happen right before I, um, oh, it said hello in Russian. Natalia, thanks for the, thank you. Um, so anyway, I called up Rob while I'm in Paris and I'm like, Rob, I'm like, I'm not doing okay over here. Like I'm having panic attacks. I need to get some some kind of psilocybin ceremony or something. So he set one up for me and I did that. And I've just kind of been hiding out at her place, you know, this shaman's house for like the last three days. And I have like a lot of ahas coming out of it. And the number one rule they gave me, my lesson, the work that I'm to do is I have to be graceful to myself, kind to myself, loving to myself, and I have to move really slowly. So as soon as Rob picked me up from the train, <laughs> he's like, he's just walking so fast. Yeah, yeah. And like, finally, I'm just like, hey, <laughs> she's like, I gotta slow down. My human has to go oh, slow. Hold on, hold on, hold on, time, time. I want to put a bit of context in here. Right? Yeah. So she's like, I don't know, five foot tall, something like six and a half foot tall. So I, 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 my strides are much bigger. So I wasn't deliberately trying to go fast. I just, you know, it's just, there's, there's a difference in gait, isn't there? There's, yeah. a, there's a step difference. So I've been, it's been good because it's been also because, uh, because Dream has been walking slow. It's given me a chance to like, okay, well, I'm going to pace myself to home. I'm going to readjust sort of my, like my energy down to home. So we've all... Me and my wife and Dreamer, we've been all taking things nice and slow. And I think that's when I say we've had quite a busy day, which we have. Maybe because it's because we've been taking it at that slower, more like focused pace. It's not been too much. It's yeah. kind of it's fit, fit nicely. Yeah. And it, it it's crazy how quickly I start to sort of walk a little bit faster. And then I have to remember, you know, just... And the other thing that they told me was, you know, you've been working your whole life, working to earn your worth, working to pay the bills, working to earn your value, working, working, working. And they said, from now on, you have to just flow and you have to feel grace and love and just flow in the mushroom voice and flow in the spirit of your energy and, and like drop down into it. And that's your number one job from here on out. And then Amanita Dreamer is just this side thing that you do sometimes, mm -hmm. but your life is going to be flowing really slowly. And that's your job. That's your life. That's what you do. Mm -hmm. You're not Amanita Dreamer. You're this energy being that's just going to flow through life very gracefully. And I'm like, okay. So that's my new job. <laughs> that's the... I mean, I think it's something we talked about before, but that balance of that thing and, you know, particularly when you're on these kind of journeys and these spiritual, spiritual journeys and these life journeys, like find that balance. Because on the one hand, you are yourself as like a human being trying to have this like human experience. But on the other hand, you are trying to create something like larger than yourself. And then finding the balance between those two things is so fucking tricky because it's like, well, look, I want to give this my all because it's bigger than what I am. So I want to give it my, I want to give it everything. But then is that all I am No, Is that, is that me? And I, I find this walking this line tricky, especially, you know, when I'm on like retreats in Peru or something like that. And I'm like, okay, am I here 
as someone having this experience? Am I, am I here as a depth of psychonautica making a video about these, these experiences? Like, what, what am I doing here? Am I, am I constantly narrating these experiences or should I just shut the fuck up and just, just be. be it? Yeah, just, yeah, just let it happen. And it's a, yeah, a very tricky balance. Um, so yeah, maybe that was a message that you, sort of you because I know you put all like, your heart and soul and I uh, had a lot of challenges with singing. So yeah, maybe it's just telling you just find the balance again. I think what I'm trying to do is enjoy the experience that mm. Amanita Dreamer is giving me, like being here with you, being in Paris and all that. And I, when I put the camera away, I'm me. I'm enjoying this experience. As soon as I pull the camera out, though, then I can be this person here doing this thing, sharing, and if I have mm. to do work and, and emails and all that, and then when it's over, I try to drop back into just being this, being here experiencing. It's a new way to live. It's weird. I'm only like five days into trying to live like this. Mm -hmm. I'm scared to do it, but at the same time, it feels better and I think I'll be better for you guys. I think I'll have better presence and better things to bring when I'm living more in my heart. That's what they're saying is that to do this, to live through your heart, to not get triggered by people, to not question people's motives, mm. to take people at face value. If somebody hurts you to be able to just you know separate yourself and just be like, okay, that's what they're doing right now and just live through your heart, this is what you have to do. You have to be this being. And then when you have to do things in a timely manner and deal with certain things, do that. Show up authentically through your heart and yeah. do that. Because that's when you think about it, that's what you did at the beginning. It's what you do at the beginning. When you first start on doing these things on YouTube, you don't show up as this kind of persona. You show up as, hey, you know, this is me and here's my experiences. And then over time, of, you know, especially when you, they have channels like what we do and they get some success then yeah the the persona the sort of branding so it suddenly becomes this its own living breathing thing and then it's like okay let's get it back let's merge these two things back together let's get let's get anakin and darth vader back <laughs> together into one body <laughs> uh, um there's a couple of questions how are we both feeling thank you caleb happy calm yeah ready for ready for a big weekend yeah uh i hold ceremony tomorrow night and he has bought a ticket. He's coming. No, you're my guest. Mm. You didn't pay. You come in as my guest. Um, let's see. I've just literally. Phew! I was just shitting my pants. I was like, "Give me that supposed to buy a ticket." Oh, uh, hey, Kev, man. <laughs> Welcome, then. <coughs> uh, let's see. You sound calmer. I do. That's good. Cool. That's good feedback. Question for the both of you: What's your opinion on the voices? Are they auditory hallucinations, spirits, voice of medicine itself? Ooh. Do you, to, do you want to go first? Well, or? you know, my website is Mushroom Voice. My store <coughs> and my community are both Mushroom Voice. And to me, it's the voice of the medicine. It's the voice of the mushrooms um, and all of their ancestors. Okay. I've, yeah, I, I kind of flip-flop on this quite a lot because my honest answer on, on it is um, I don't care. I honestly don't care. Um, for me with any of these, uh, these medicines or substances, what it's all about is the experience. I really don't care about the explanation. Like if somebody turned up tomorrow with undisputable proof that what was happening happened because of aliens or because of dimensional beings or that it was actually just purely uh, a chemical reaction happening on your brain, I honestly don't give a fuck. I, to me, these experiences are what they are. They are some of the most important experiences of my life. They've helped me greatly. And I don't really care what the explanation is. Now, obviously, that doesn't mean I, I kind of, you know, I'm completely dismissive. I'm certainly got an interest in it, but I'm not, I'm not so invested that, oh, if it's not this, then it's, that kind of takes the meaning out of it. For me, I tend to lean more towards the kind of like the Jungian psychoanalytical model that, that we are like embedded within us as human beings. We have these kind of archetypes of, you know, you know, uh, you know, the mother, the father, the old king, the sort of, you know, the, the warrior, all, the, all these different sort of psychological archetypes 
and that what's happening is some kind of interaction where we're kind of it's more of an inward journey than an outward journey so i don't really subscribe to things like like you know aliens or all kind of spirits but i do believe where you know some kind of communion is going on so that when you ingest another conscious system that that conscious system is merging with your conscious system and then it's triggering all these interesting sort of psychological effects so yeah i mean i do believe that there is you know a, a mushroom is a conscious system and there is something in there that we are in, in communion with um so yeah i don't know if that answers your question but it's like I said, for me, I think the answer to all things is always, it's, it's focus on the experience. That's all, that's all that matters and your experience as a, as a human being and the, the kind of the journey that you take with these, you know, whatever you want to call them, spirits, aliens, psychological, you know, artifacts, whatever. Just, it's just an experience. For those of you that are just joining us, this is Adeptus Psychonautica. Hello. <laughs> And you need to check out his channel. Will you write something? He's writing in the comments, um, hello, so you can see his name there. Go check him out. His take on entheogens and the use of ayahuasca, DMT, LSD, all of that, he uses on camera. He has really amazing things to say about it. I love his take. Uh, he became my brother across the pond because... I started watching his stuff and I'm like, fuck yeah, that's exactly how I feel. I just couldn't say it like that. <laughs> like you said it perfectly. Thank you for saying it like that. <laughs> so if you all like my channel, we have, there's, we have a lot of crossover mm -hmm. yeah. with, our, with our channels. So he says he'll, hello in the chat there. So mark his channel, subscribe to it or whatever. And at um, 30 past the hour, we're going to close this and then we're going to go live on his channel. So if y'all want to jump over there, you can do that. And then ah, you just put out a video. The, what was the most recent video that you? So and I was like, you said it better than I could. Um, what, I can't remember, what was it? It was a few weeks ago now. What was the last one I did? It was. I have to go and check. Um, I should probably know, shouldn't I? And it made me want to go make a video about it. So it's coming up. I've got it in the queue. It's scheduled on my channel. I had to set up a bunch of videos to happen while I was here. And my take on it is coming up. It was, there's no such thing as a, there's no as a such thing trip. as a bad trip. There's no such thing. So mine already posted my take on what bad trips are, mm -hmm. but you really need to hear his take on it. It's, it's just, he did a better job than I did <laughs> oh. on it. And then uh, there was another question I wanted to answer. Can you pull the chat back up? Yeah, sure. Um, go. Is that a Labradorite necklace? Your necklace? Labradorite? Um, I don't actually know because I'm not I'm not particular expert on these. What when I I was I got this when I was uh, I do a lot of ayahuasca retreats in Peru, and I always try and buy stuff when I'm there, uh, mostly because it's a it's kind of a way of you know financing the people. These are very sort of you know poor sort of uh, parts of Peru, and I just saw this one and it just spoke to me. It was just so shiny. And when I actually there's actually an imperfection in it. It's kind of chipped here, but I kind of I like that and yeah it just yeah I, I don't know it just i think it is yeah i think it is but i love how sort of a twinkling reflection yeah. it is and sort of meta that metallic glow so i did uh dmt today and i wanted to talk to you about it real quick and i'll talk about it on his channel too so as soon as i dropped in <laughs> and they took me away um it as soon as I went, like there were, it's, I took off immediately. There was no hanging around, but I went to a place where immediately there was the whoa, that sound, you know, and it was kind of etchy, but also just like that, that and, and all of the beings and the things that you see that rotate and all the colors and all the faces and all of the DMT beings were there. But then like on the side, if I looked over here, there was a scene from like a concrete wall and over it, there was grass and it was built like in the 1970s and it had like a, an outdoor busy area vibe on the other side of it, like here on earth. And the concrete wall was right here beside mm -hmm. me. And if I looked over there, it was terrifying. So I would look back over here at the DMT alien people things, but their faces were mean and ugly and scary. They weren't whimsical yeah. or funny. And I immediately got panic and I could feel my heart pounding. And then I couldn't breathe. I felt like something was sitting on my chest and I couldn't breathe. And I was trying to tell them, but I couldn't tell them or say anything or get out of my where I was to say anything about it. 
And so that made me have even more panic and I'm just sitting there panicking, looking at all these faces just coming at me and like, and I'm like, this is no fun. Like, where's the fun? I, I knew where I, were, where I was and what I was supposed to see based on all the stories, trip reports, drawings, videos. And I was like, really guys, come on. And I kept breathing like really deeply, just trying to get air because I couldn't breathe and just trying to calm the panic. And I would laugh spontaneously, but there was nothing that I was laughing at. And then there was this weird one that just kept jerking like in and out and then leaving. And I'm like, God, fuck off. Like, what an asshole. It was, that's all that kept happening the whole time is I just kept sitting there in this space with all these weird sounds and then just these really ugly faces that never really smiled. There was never anything nice about it or pretty about it. I think it's worth, worth mentioning that we, we did it in like a room with <clears throat> more or less like a silent room. So there, was, there wasn't any sort of music or anything sort of like bringing through this, which, which I think in hindsight was a mistake. Um, and I think, yeah, if we did it again, then that would be something to book. So it, it really does help for, for me. It really helps like guide that narrative and just provide a bit of um, context to it. But yeah, I mean, I had no, I had no idea it was going to turn it that I mean, turn it like that. But I, I think given what you've been saying about the sort of the, the stresses of all the traveling and stuff, I don't think it's entirely surprising that that thing. But I, I certainly, yeah, I was, I was, I felt, I felt disappointed for you. I felt, I felt really sort of bad. I wanted you to have this like awesome, yeah. happy like belly laughs, just like, oh my God, just like, I know I know what this guy's talking about. And I was like, oh God, when I heard you say, oh, it was horrible. I was like, oh no, <laughs> it what, is what, what it I is. to my friend? Well, oh. we recorded it all and I'll upload it to my mushroomvoice.com, my private patron page of me doing DMT, the whole video and me talking right after it happened and what happened. I'll upload that to my patrons first, then I'll get it a couple of weeks, and then I'll upload it to amityadreamer.net where all my content is and everything. Um, and then I asked them to help me out because I figured, well, this isn't any fun. Maybe I can get some work done. And I asked them to help me out with this issue that I've got in my personal <clears throat> life. And immediately the sound stopped. Everything went black and white and just it was still rolling and moving, but it was just black and white lines. Yeah. For the whole rest of the trip, probably the last half of the trip, I'm like, seriously? Like, are you punishing me? Like, why are you doing this? Oh <laughs> so <God>. stupid. <laughs> I feel, I feel for that. I so wanted you to <laughs> see all the awesome stuff. It just wasn't meant to be. Sometimes, you know, you do these things. It's just not your night, you know. And I think maybe that was that was one. But you did say that sometimes first experiences aren't the best, and <clears throat> well, uh, for, for me. Uh, I, it took me like six times before I got like the breakthrough experience. Now, that said, that those, the, the six times leading up to it were all like very pleasurable experiences. Um, so not nothing like what you described, but it wasn't this full, like, uh, like out of body, just cosmic experience. And, and then when I got to the sixth time, yeah, I was like in the cosmic womb of eternity. Like I was crying and just like, wanting to have like telepathic sex with like these, yeah, all these beings around me. It was one of the most amazing experiences of my life. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I was, I, I was literally in this like kind of like womb of eternity. And for someone like me who like, spoil, spoilers turn as luck as like, I've got like serious like mother issues, like serious mummy issues. Then it was like, it, I was just, it was beaming maternal Oh, I never felt so any, anything like it. It was like, yeah, I just wanted to like express love and gratitude in it, like through every cell in my body. And all I could do, because I was completely off my toes, like, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and they, they were saying to me, like, you, you don't have to say anything. I was, and I was like, I know, I know, but I want to, and because. I need you to know like how much this means to me. It was, I mean, I'm rambling now like a fucking lunatic, but uh, yeah, it was, yeah, I, I, I wanted that kind of experience for you. Well, and I would do it again tonight or tomorrow, but I got a whole ceremony tomorrow. So I need to, oh, and we're shooting for the documentary tomorrow all day. Yeah, yeah. We are starting really early and then <clears throat> I'm making the medicine and then we start filming all day long and then I leave to go get ready for ceremony while the camera people have lists of shots to get. And then we start the ceremony and then <clears> the camera people are going to be there 
filming parts of the ceremony, so I don't think I should. Um, what's your opinion on respecting the medicines before entering in a journey? I mean, yeah. <laughs> well, you should always respect the medicine. You don't respect the medicine, you'll... You're going to get fucked up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I think everyone has different ways that they show respect. So, like, I do... I have mental com communications, and sometimes I speak verbally, you know, and have, like, my own thing with it. And in holding ceremony, I have found that each person has a different thing that they want to do before they begin. And that's how they show respect. Mm -hmm. So I think it's like... Yeah, I, th I think it, I mean, it depends on, on the sense because different people have got like, different ideas of what kind of showing respect means. And some people would say, like, you should only ever use these things in like a ceremonial way. I should only ever use them in, in like a spiritual way. And I think, you know, I, I don't think there's anything particularly wrong with... Um, using some of these substances. Again, it varies depending on the substance or the times and places to do it. Like I would never do like ayahuasca in a nightclub or something like that. But there are, you know, there's a, occasions where it's just, you know, to do something just to just to be with somebody, just to sit there. You know, I, me and my wife, we do stuff just to be together. And it's some of the most spiritual experiences. We're not trying to be spiritual. We're just trying to be together and have an awesome, like, you know, like loving time. But that just, I think there's nothing wrong with that but just like hey let's just have let's just have a time together and just remember how awesome everything is let's have something show us the universe and show us the galaxy and our place in it and stuff and yeah that's fine and then there's places you know times for okay like, like help me heal like there's so there's different it's tools in the toolbox and i don't think it kind of um i personally don't think it's like you know you should get too much into the dogma of this should only be used like this well, I mean, obviously, that's with common sense. Like, say, don't be doing things like... Gatekeeping. Know, like, yeah, yeah. That's all gatekeeping. Yeah. Yeah. And I know with Amanita, they're so <clears throat> joyful, playful, jolly, laughter. But, man, they can get in there with the medicine when they want to. Um, let's see. Can you two tell me how to set up mushroom ceremonies in the UK? I work with Liberty Cats. Feeling called to work. Um, I don't actually live in the UK. So I'm, I'm from the UK, but I don't live there anymore. We're... we're, we're I live in Switzerland, which is where we are now. So how to set up mushroom... I mean, I'm sure I could give you some pointers on how to set up mushroom ceremonies in general. Um, but, I, you know, you have to be particularly with the UK. I know the very... Um, yeah, the legal situation is not great. So you'd have to... I think one piece of advice I'd give you is, like, be very careful how you advertise such things in the UK. Like, the police can be absolute assholes. Um, which is one of the reasons I left. Um, so, I mean, what I, I would say the main thing if, if you're holding uh, ceremonies like that is, yeah, just make sure you've got your kind of your own shit in order and that you are comfortable holding that kind of space. And also just, and it sounds like a kind of a bit of a morbid thought, but really consider, like, can you, can you handle, like, worst case scenarios? Like, could you handle... Uh, things like if you've got someone who's got a very severe PTSD, perhaps someone who's been in the military and they start freaking out, can you deal with that? Can you deal with that so that it doesn't disturb everybody else, so that it doesn't make that person's trauma worse? Like really uh, make sure that you know what you're sort of doing. But before. also you need to check into other people that are doing it because mm. they're going to have forms to, for people to fill out. They're going to tell you what their intake process is like how many times they interview people before they'll allow them in ceremony, what they're looking for, red <coughs> flags. Like, it could save you a lot of trouble if mm -hmm. you can find some already and go to those people. But yeah, but just as a quick show with the, the Liberty Caps, I mean, that was, yeah, that was, they kind of just grow everywhere all over the UK. That was like part of the thing is, with this time of year when we were kids, you'd go back to school and on the... The fields around our school, they were just growing <laughs> everywhere. Really yeah, yeah, you could go to, go to school. You went to school like That's an, an hour early in the morning and you would just picking magic mushrooms for an hour before school and you would end up with bags of like magic mushrooms. It was... Well, we're going to pick this up over at Adepta Psychonautica's channel and we're going to hang with his folks if y'all want to come over and hang over there. Thanks for joining us. I love you, beautiful people. Bye.